Living in Virginia, you're in the fast lane on the information superhighway. We've invested $3 billion in Virginia's broadband network to give you one of the fastest internet connection speeds in the world, so you can build relationships, bring new business to our state, and meet the future of education. It's amazing what we can do together. Visit VCTA.com to learn how broadband connects the Commonwealth. Welcome to a special edition of Cable Reports, brought to you by the VCTA Broadband Association. I am Woody Evans. Today we are featuring several members of the Ella Baker Youth Leadership Program. They are junior and senior high school students from the Second House District in Northern Virginia, represented by Delegate Jennifer Carroll Foy. While here in Richmond, they are watching the legislative process both in the House and Senate meeting with policymakers and visiting historical sites. Daniela Sephora, good to see you. Good to see you too. Kedrick Gowdy, good to see you, sir. You too. Devin Hurt, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Carolyn Silvera, good to see you. Good to see you. Daniela, I understand that you attended a meeting with our Attorney General, Mark Herring. What were your impressions? Um, it was really exciting um, to see him, and I remember asking him a question about um, his role in the ERA. That's the Equal Rights Amendment. Equal Rights Amendment and um, what he did. So basically he explained his role and how um, his office is basically like the lawyers to the state. And it helped me realize that for a long time I've been thinking if I want to go into politics, I always think about the big picture president. However, there are many different ways that you can help people, which is my purpose and my goal. And I can definitely do that through, you know, running as an attorney general or just doing local um, government. And uh, Kendrick, the Equal Rights Amendment has been a long time coming. I think it's about 47 years. Yes, uh, what were your impressions about the ability of the General Assembly to finally pass that amendment? It was uh, really inspiring seeing so many people finally be able to pass that uh, amendment. It's a uh, kind of the president to see how women get downgraded so much and they're just as capable of doing a job as men are. So it was really inspiring to see how it got to pass. Great. And uh, Devin, I know that uh, you've met with, uh, with a couple of uh, delegates, including uh, Joshua Cole and Lee Carter. Tell us about those meetings. Yeah, um, it was really surreal. Uh, I hear a lot about them in the news. Uh, Joshua Cole is actually the delegate for uh, where I live in Stafford, um, so I look up to him a, look. Uh, sorry, I look up to them a lot. We have a lot of the same ideas, so to actually get to meet them in person and talk to them was a really good experience. And I actually reached out to Joshua Cole afterward, and he offered me an internship role and a um, a role in his reelection campaign when Great. it comes there. So, what were your impressions of both of them before and then after? I don't know. I thought Joshua Cole. I mean, I've always thought Joshua Cole was like a really like nice guy, really genuine. Like I hear a lot of great things about him. So like actually getting to meet him, that's exactly how he is. Like he's really like smiley. He's a great person. Um, Lee Carter. I didn't really have much of like. I didn't hear much about like his personality, but like getting to actually meet him, he's really charismatic, uh, really passionate, and just a really nice guy. And in Caroline, I understand you want to talk about the delegate that actually uh, represents you and who sponsors this program. Tell us about her. Yes, uh, so the delegate that brought us for here is Delegate Jennifer, Jennifer Carol Foy. Um, it was really amazing meeting her because I feel like now she's another woman in politics that I can look up to. Uh, she was formerly um, a public defender, so she told us um, about her work there and um, about all of uh, her stances on different issues. Uh, my favorite quote from her when we met her was, uh, people over profit. So she really focuses on um, things such as uh, maternity leave 
and um, health care issues. And I also understand you met with an advocacy group called CASA. And uh, I understand that you were greatly impressed with that organization and especially its leader. Yes. Um, so, Luis, uh, I, I don't know, every time that I see um, a very powerful, successful um, Latino person, um, it kind of inspires me like, oh, I can do this too. Um, he was very well spoken and uh, he told us about his work. It was just inspiring to me and um, hopefully I can work with them in the future. And Daniela, has this experience uh, inspired you to, to get more heavily involved in politics, potentially running for office one day? Definitely. Um, as a kid, I always knew that I wanted to get into politics, but because I'm a dual citizen, I've always wondered, do I want to do American politics or do I want to do um, Guinean politics? So being on um, this leadership group and then seeing everybody, it's definitely made me feel more connected to people in our in a, locally and that I can make change um, through our local government. And of course, Kendrick, I assume you've been inspired as well. I don't know if you want to ultimately run for politics, but give us your thoughts about that. Uh, I've always been interested in politics for a while, but coming to this program, it really pushed me, inspired me to like want to hold a position in politics. Yeah. Where, at what level would you like to start? Or have you even uh, taken it that far in terms of a I strategy? Haven't really, I haven't really taken it that far yet, but mm, dream big, so maybe president. <laughs> <laughs> Devin, what about you? I would definitely say so. Um, I've always had an interest in politics, and I've even had like friends and even my parents tell me that I should like run for governor or something. And um, I've always had an interest in anthropology, so I wanted to, I wanted to pursue a career in that. But like coming to this program and meeting like so many people with like similar ideas and kind of seeing how much I could do for my community uh, really makes me like want to consider like staying in Virginia and pursuing a political career. Um, Doug uh, Jennifer Carol Foy was, was really inspiring. So I, now I think I actually might pursue a career in politics. And Caroline, do you think you might do the same ultimately? Yeah, um, I don't really have an end goal for what I want to be, but um, I think I'm definitely going to start small, local. I've been more involved recently um, with Prince William County officials as well, so you know, might as well start there. Danielle, have there been any surprises since you've been up here in terms of what you've learned? Uh, uh, you had a view about what happened here, but are you surprised by anything? Um, talking about, I think, one thing that um, I kind of forget is that politics ha politicians have family too and how um, their balance with family and also doing their job. And so um, when we talked to Delegate Kara Foy, I was really surprised that um, she did her campaign while she was pregnant with twins. And so that inspired me as well that, you know, you can do anything that you want to and that she had a lot of strength. So it just kind of surprised me how strong she was balancing um, taking care of a family and also um, being a politician. And Kendrick, any surprises for you? Uh, hearing people's stories of where they come from, their background, and what pushed them to get here, that was really interesting. It kind of motivated me to do better. So who did you hear some of those stories from, if you recall? Uh, Delegate Carol Foy, how she was kind of, I want to say, oppressed. She wasn't, uh, she went to a VMI male institution, so she wasn't really, you know, they put her down saying she wouldn't be able to do or graduate, but she kept focused, stayed strong to her customs and stuff, and she ultimately graduated. So that really inspired me. And uh, Devin, what about you? Um, what would surprise me the most was meeting so many people who are like really informed and really know what they're talking about, like my age. Um, like most of my friends don't really like pay that much attention to politics. So coming here and meeting so many people my age who are, have a lot of the same ideas and are really like involved in politics and it's also their passion was, I didn't really expect it as much, but like it was great. And Caroline, how did you learn about this Ella Baker opportunity? Um, so my school, they tweeted it out, so I was just able to apply there. And what's the process? Uh, the process, so it was a Google form. Um, they had you write a couple of essays. I believe one of them was uh, what 
public policy are you most interested in or what is one thing that you um, would change in your community? And I wrote about um, having equitable school funding. And Daniela, what about you in terms of, of the process and what you may have written about? Yeah, so um, the same thing for me, our school tweeted it out, so I just clicked the link and I saw it. Um, so back to what Caroline said, we had the essay about what would you um, like to change, and I talked about um, like women's rights and um, about violence against women in our community, and so um, just bringing more attention to that. And I remember in one of my essays, I think I talked about um, equity and funding resource inequity and how um, we might think that um, you know segregation doesn't happen but when you look at recent issues with like HBCUs and they're not getting as much investment from the um, federal historically government. Black colleges yes, and universities, historically yes. black colleges yes. and universities they're not getting as much funding as other um, primarily white institutions. And what about you Kendrick? What subjects did you uh, write about in terms of an essay? Uh, for something that I wanted to change, I wrote about healthcare, how not all people are able to get healthcare. And that specifically touched me because my cousin, she has lupus. And uh, she's not able to you know, pay for to see all doctors all the time because she's in student debt coming out of college. So she's not able to go see the doctors like she is uh, supposed to. So that really touched me, and that's why I talked about my cousin. Devin, what about you? I wrote about uh, raising teacher wages in Virginia. Um, it's something that I care about a lot because in Stafford, our teachers don't really get paid a lot, and right now we're like suffering from teacher shortages and even like bus shortages. So I wrote about perhaps like proposing a minimum wage for teachers, kind of like a different wage, so um, teachers can get paid more because they do a lot, not only like what they do in teaching, but they go the extra mile for students, and we really depend on them a lot for our futures, so I think that they definitely deserve more than what they get. I'm gonna go in reverse order now. I want to give each of you an opportunity to talk to your colleagues back in your uh, various localities as to why this program is so important and why they should get involved in it, Caroline. Okay, um, this program is really important, I think not only for people who are interested in going into politics, but also just anybody, I mean, we're all citizens, this impacts us, this impacts everybody, the laws that they're making here. Um, so it's definitely a good opportunity to um, come here, um, meet your delegates, let them know about in, uh, issues that interest you and see if you can make a change for your community. Great, Devin. Um, I definitely think that coming here is, it's definitely, it's a great program. Um, not being involved in politics, what goes on in like Congress and stuff kind of seems like outside. So when you come here and get to meet delegates and like sit in sessions and stuff, you get, it becomes more personal and you get to realize like your part in your community and how much you can do for your community. And it really inspires people to like actually want to become more involved in politics and um, better our cities and our states and our country as a whole. Kendrick, what about you? Yeah, I think this was a great opportunity. Uh, I think people should come here because it's a way to learn more about your local government that we don't really get to learn in our schools. So this was a great on-hand opportunity and makes you get inspired to want to do more in your community to help out. Daniela? Um, this program is really good for learning about the legislative process. Um, a lot of people don't look into the bills that are being passed by um, different delegates and different senators and coming here, um, I remember hearing yesterday that there was like a minimum wage bill that was on the floor. And so going back to what everybody has said, um, learning about the issues in our community and what your delegates are trying to do, if they are listening to you, that's one thing that you can learn um, from this and um, what you can do about it. You can be an attorney general, you can run for um, delegate, or you can be um, a senator. So a shout out to each one of you, each one of your high schools. Uh, where do you attend, Daniela? I attend C.D. Hilton High School. And Kendrick? C.D. Hilton High School. And Devin? Brook Point High School. And Caroline? C.D. Hilton. Gosh, you've been great. Thank you. For Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you for watching this special edition of Cable Reports brought to you by the VCTA Broadband Association. Until next time, I'm Woody Evans.
Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-